Myself, Dr. Gibran Amal presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with a very important lecture. In today's session, we are going to start the series of tissue processing techniques or histopathological techniques. Now, in today's lecture, we will start with the fixatives. Now, as you know that histopathological techniques or tissue processing techniques, they are very, very important from both your theory as well as practical point of view. And approximately it is carrying 40 marks in your practical exams. Okay. So this is something which is very basic and it is very important for all the residents who will be appearing for the final exams. So pay a lot of attention. So what are the things that we are going to read about the fixatives in today's lecture? So we are going to read about the basics of the fixatives. What is the aim of, fix, of tissue fixation or what is the characteristics of the ideal fixative? Then we will look at the classification or the types of fixatives, mechanism of action. Then we are going to read about the individual fixatives, then the fixatives of choice for day to day practice and the artifacts okay that we encounter and the troubleshooting that we encounter uh, with respect to the fixatives that we are using so let us begin without wasting any more time so first we will discuss about the basics so as you know fixation is it is the first step of any histological and cytological laboratory technique so what is the definition of fixation so if someone asks you so you have to write it uh, just like this it is the process by which the cells in the tissue are fixed in a chemical and physical state and all the biochemical and proteolytic activities within the cells are prevented so that the cells or tissues can resist any morphological change or distortion or decomposition after subsequent treatment with various reagents. Now, fixation helps to maintain the tissue nearest to its original living state. Large number of fixatives are available in the market and each fixative has its own advantage and disadvantage. Now, appro uh, appropriate fixation of the tissues for histological examination is central to all histology tests as without this process, all tissues would degrade and analysis would be useless. So, the basic mechanisms and principles by which the special fixatives act, they fall under several broad groups, but the most important mechanism of actions include the covalent cross-linking of fixatives, dehydration and the effects of acid, salt formation and heat. Now, what are compound fixatives? Now, this is a very, very simple and very basic viva question. So, compound fixatives are those fixatives which has two or more components which are having individual mechanism of action. So, compound uh, fixatives are those which may function using several of these mechanisms in which in addition to one, there are different uh, fixatives are used and they are combined together. So, each individual fixative are, is having its own, uh, you know, mechanism of action. So, multiple mechanism of action, action are, are, are at play simultaneously. Now, remember that when choosing a fixative, there is a balance between the advantages and disadvantages with e which each fixative possess. Now, what are these advantage and disadvantage? So, it includes the molecular changes or losses from fixed tissues, swelling or shrinkage of the tissues, Variations in the quality of the histochemical and immunohistochemical staining, the effect on the biochemical analysis and the ability to maintain the structure of the cellular organelles. Now, you have to remember one thing that many tissues, they are soluble in aqueous acid or other liquid environment and, and to reliably view the microanatomy and the microenvironment of these tissues, the soluble component must not be lost during fixation and tissue processing. Now, if soluble components are lost from the cytoplasm of the cells, the color of the cytoplasm on HNE staining will be reduced or modified and the aspects of appearance of the microanatomy of the tissue will be lost or damaged. For example, how the mitochondria looks, they will, you know, they will be distorted. Okay, so in order to visualize the microanatomy of the stained tissue sections, the original microscopic relationship between the cells. So, for example, there are different cells, okay. So, the relationship between the different cells has to be maintained. The relationship, okay, inside the cell between the nucleus, okay, and between the cytoplasm that has to be maintained and the relationship between the cells, okay, and its extracellular environment that has to be maintained as well. So, in order to visualize the microanatomy of the stained tissue section, the original microscopic relationship between the cells or between the cellular component that is between the nucleus and cytoplasm or between the cell and the extracellular material must be maintained with little disruption to the organization of the tissue. The local chemical composition of the tissue must also be maintained. Okay? So, minimizing the loss of cellular components which includes the large proteins, mRNA, DNA, lipids, 
prevents the destruction of macromolecular structures like cytoplasmic membrane, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum, nuclear membrane, lysosomes, mitochondria. So it is very important. For example, maintenance of these all organelles organelles will be very important if you want to do an electron microscopic study okay so minimizing the loss of these cellular components like the proteins dna lipids and uh, mrna is preventing the destruction of such macromolecular structures and therefore uh, maintaining the uh, cytoplasmic organelles similarly immunohistochemical evaluation of structure and function may be reduced or lost depending on the type of fixative that you have used so almost any method of fixation will cause shrinkage or swelling of the tissue, will lead to hardening of the tissue and will lead to color variations in various kinds of histochemical stains that are being done post tissue processing. So various methods of fixation always produce some artifacts in the appearance of tissue on staining. However, for diagnostic pathology, it is important that such artifacts are consistent, predictable and understood. Okay, So, we mean to say that no fixative that we use in the lab, none of the fixative, they are not ideal. But we should know what are the uh, you know typical uh, uh, artifacts or, or typical disadvantages of a particular fixative should be known and that should be predictable Okay, and that should be understood beforehand only. So, what is an ideal fixative? Again, a very important long answer question or it is asked as a viva also. So, what is an ideal fixative or in other terms, I can ask you what are the aims of fixation? Okay, Ideal fixative or aims of fixation. So, very importantly, you have to understand that till date, a universal or ideal fixative has not been identified. Okay, So, we are basically living in a compromise. Okay. So, what, is, what are the properties of an ideal fixative? Number one, it should be able to prevent autolysis of cells or tissues. The fixative must have the ability to prevent short term and long term destruction of the micro architecture of the tissue by stopping all the uh, activities of catabolic enzymes and hence autolysis, minimizing the diffusion of soluble molecules from their original lo uh, location. So, very importantly, it should prevent autolysis. It should prevent short and long term destruction of the micro architecture by stopping all enzymatic activity as well as by inhibiting the autolysic process. Okay. And also minimizing the diffusion of the soluble molecules from their original location. Another important characteristic of a good fixative is that is the fixation and inactivation of infectious agents, especially prevention of decomposition of the tissue by bacteria. So, whatever infectious agents are there, we have to inactivate them so as to prevent decomposition. Okay. Fixative should also permit the recovery of macromolecules. Just now, we had read that there are certain macromolecules like proteins, mRNA, DNA, lipid. So, fixative should permit the recovery of macromolecules from fixed and paraffin embedded tissue without extensive modifications of such macromolecules. Other important characteristic of an ideal fixative include useful for a, uh, that being useful for a wide variety of tissue types. So, a fixative should be able to fix a wide variety of tissue types including fat, lymphoid and neural tissue. It should preserve small as well as large specimen and support histochemical, immunohistochemical and in situ hybridization and other specialized procedures. So, whatever tissue we are fixing with whatever fixative that should support staining by the different kinds of histochemical stains like HNE staining or any special staining as well as immunohistochemical uh, procedure or performing any other special procedures like in situ hybridization or fish. The most important characteristic of a fixative is to support the high quality and consistent staining that we do for routine histopathology that is the, the, the hematoxylin and the eosin staining both initially and after storage of the paraffin blocks for at least a decade. Then the fixative should be non-toxic. They should maintain the volume and shape of the cell as far as possible at the time of tissue processing. The fixative should penetrate and fix the tissues rapidly and they should have a shelf life of at least one year and be compatible with modern automated tissue processes. It should be readily dispo uh, disposable or recyclable and it should, it should support long-term tissue storage to give excellent microtomy of paraffin blocks and should also be cost effective. It should be able to make the tissue firm to hard so that it facilitates cutting. Okay, It facilitates the cutting and the grossing as well as further tissue processing. So, these are all the features of an 
ideal fixative. So if you are asked what are the aims of fixation or what is that, what are the features of an ideal fixative? So these are the important points that you should keep in mind. Now we are going to read what are the tissue changes which occurs during the process of tissue fixation. So the number one thing is there can be volume changes. So fixatives may change the volume of the cell. For example, some fixatives like osmium tetroxide, it can cause cell swelling. Whereas others like formaldehyde, they might cause shrinkage of, of the volume by 33%. Similarly, glutaraldehyde also causes significant tissue shrinkage. Then other tissue changes hardening of the tissue. Now the fixation changes the consistency of the tissue and some amount of tissue hardening occurs due to fixation. Then interference of staining. Now fixation may cause hindrance of staining of the enzymes. For example, formaldehyde it inactivates 80% of the ribonucleus enzyme. It has been noted that osmium tetroxide inhibits the hematoxylin and eosin staining. So it can affect the further staining of the tissues or further processes like the IHC or fish. Then changes of the optical density by fixation. Now the fixation may cause the change in the optical density of the nucleus and the nuclei may look more condensed or hyperchromatic. Okay. Okay. Now in general, we are first going to just see in basic. Okay. This is just the basic. What are the basic types of fixative? So, in general, if you see, basically there are two types of fixative. So, tissue fixation can be achieved by either physical methods or by chemical methods. So, what are the physical methods? So, these are very, this is a very, very basic classification of the fixative. So, you can, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can ca classify or very basically you can classify the tissue fixation into two parts. Those which are, uh, you know, fixing the tissue by physical methods and other fixatives which are acting by chemical methods. So, physical methods include heating or heat fixation, microwaving and freeze drying. So, these are independent processes and they are not commonly used in routine practice of medical or veterinary pathology, anatomy and histology. Now, the exception to the physical method is the dry heat fixation of microorganisms which is done prior to gram staining which is yet widely used. Now, methods of fixation used in research protocols includes the use of vapors and rarely when fixation of whole animal is needed, the perfusion of animal's vascular system uh, with a fixative is also carried out. So, these are some other methods, okay, not uh, necessarily these are physical. The main types of physical methods includes heating, microwaving and freeze drying. Now, the chemical method. Now, remember, most methods of fixation used in the processing of the tissue for histopathological diagnosis, they rely on chemical fixation, which is carried out by liquid fixatives. Reproducibility of the microscopic appearance of the tissues after h &E staining is the prime requirement of the fixatives used for diagnostic pathology. So, in day-to-day -day practical life, it is the chemical fixatives or the liquid fixatives which are mainly used for histopathological diagnosis. Now, several chemicals or their combinations can act as good fixative and accomplish many of the stated goals of fixation. Some fixatives add covalent reactive groups which may induce cross-linking between the proteins or between individual protein moieties within the nucleic acid or between nucleic acid and the proteins. So, they might lead to cross-linking of proteins or between proteins and nucleic acids or within the proteins inside the nucleic acid. Now, the best example of such cross-linking fixatives, okay, they are formaldehyde and glutaraldehyde. So, this is one type, okay, this is one type. Another approach to fixation is to use agents that are removing the free water from the tissue and that is precipitating and coagulating the protein. So, these are nothing but the dehydrating agents or dehydrants. Examples of these dehydrants include ethanol, methanol and acetone. These agents denature the proteins by breaking the hydrophobic bonds responsible for maintaining the tertiary structure of the proteins, thus leading to denaturation of the proteins. Other fixatives are also there like acetic acid, trichloroacetic acid, mercuric chloride and zinc acetate. So, they act by either denaturing the proteins okay, and the nucleic acids through either changes in the pH or via salt formation. Now, these are the very crude method of differentiating or classifying the fixatives, those acting by physical and chemical method. Okay, This is very basic classification. Okay. So, this is a very, very basic one. Okay. As I have already mentioned before about compound fixative. Compound fixatives are those wherein you are combining two different types of or two different classes of fixatives together, each having its own mechanism of action. For example, alcoholic formalin. Now, over here, there are two things. Alcohol is there which is acting as a dehydrant and formalin is there which is acting by cross-linking. So, alcoholic formalin fixes the tissue in two ways. First, 
by cross-linking the proteins over here the formalin is acting and second by inducing coagulation and dehydration that is the alcoholic component. So you should be able to answer if someone asks you what is the compound fixative you should be able to answer with the help of an example as I have shown here. Now we will discuss some of the physical method that I have just stated that is the heat fixation. So it is the simplest form of fixation. For example, you can compare heat fixation with boiling or poaching an egg that is precipitating the protein and on cutting the yolk and the egg white can be identified separately. Each component is less soluble in water after heat fixation than the same component of a fresh egg. Now picking up, another example is picking up a frozen section on a warm microscope slide serves two functions. First of all, they will help the section to attach to the particular slide and they will also partially fix it by heat and dehydration. Even though adequate morphology could be obtained by boiling tissue in normal saline, heat is primarily used to accelerate other forms of fixation as well as other steps of tissue processing. So basically heat is not used primarily for the process of fixation, rather it is used okay, just to facilitate or to accelerate the, the, the speed of fixation or to accelerate the process of fixation as well as accelerate other steps of tissue processing. So when we read about tissue processing in details, I will read in details about individual steps. Right now you need to understand that, that tissue fixation is only the first step of tissue processing. Okay. Now the next important type of physical uh, this thing that we will see is microwave fixation. That is the next important physical method is microwave fixation. So let us read about that. This can be asked as a short answer note in the exam. So microwave is a type of electromagnetic wave with frequencies ranging between 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz and the wavelength varies from centimeter to nanometer. Scientific and medical microwave ovens operate in the frequency of 2.45 gigahertz and 0.915 gigahertz respectively. Now the electromagnetic field which is created by the microwave okay, and the dipolar molecules such as water they rapidly oscillate in this micro uh, electromagnetic field okay so the microwave it does what it is creating an electromagnetic field and dipolar molecules whenever such electromagnetic field is created then dipolar molecules like water they start to oscillate in this micro uh, electromagnetic field now this rapid kinetic motion of the dipolar molecules okay they generate uniform amount of heat and the generated heat accelerates the process of fixation and also other steps of tissue processing the most important characteristic of microwave heat generation is that there is a uniform or homogeneous increase of temperature within the tissue and every part of the tissue is uniformly heated. Okay. Now, what are the factors which are controlling the temperature rise? Okay. So, it is the dielectric property of the media, thermal properties of the material, radiation level, orientation and shape of the object. What are the advantages of microwave fixation? There is a rapid tissue processing, no change in the volume of the tissue. Preservation of the tissue antigen and it is very good for immunohistochemistry. It facilitates the staining reaction without any bad effect. Microwave heating can reduce the times for fixation of some gross specimen and histological sections for from more than 12 hours to less than 20 minutes. So this is how this is how fast it can facilitate the process of fixation of grossing specimen. So there are certain disadvantages also. Now the tissue which is immersed in formalin during microwave fixation may generate large amount of the toxic formalin vapor. Therefore, when you are using microwave fixation, an overhead hood is required for the removal of this toxic substance from the microwave. Commercial glyoxal based fixatives which do not form vapors when heated at 55 degrees centigrade have been introduced instead of, of formalin to be used with microwave technology and it is an efficient method of microwave fixation. Another disadvantage is that there can be a chance of heat injury while using the microwave. So what are the applications of this? It is It can be used for routine surgical pathology laboratory. During electromicroscopy after osmium tetroxide fixation you might use microwave and when urgent processing of biopsy for example kidney biopsy is required wherein you want to shorten the time of fixation in that case you can go for the microwave fixation. Okay. Okay. Now we are going to read in details about the classification. So till now we have seen the basic classification, those acting by physical methods and those acting by the chemical method. Now we will see the detailed uh, you know, classification of, of the fixative. Now depending on the nature of fixation and how we are fixing, it can be immersion fixation, coating fixation, vapor fixation, perfusion fixation, freeze drying, microwave fixation. 
then based on the chemical properties like which type of chemical we are using either it is an aldehyde like formaldehyde butyraldehyde or we are using oxidizing agent like osmium tetroxide or protein denaturing agent like the alcohol dehydrants like the ethyl and methyl alcohol cross linking agents like carbodimide miscellaneous like picric acid then depending on the component present now sometimes it can be divided into either simple or compound simple is only one type of chemical with one mechanism of action is there like formaldehyde or glutaraldehyde or osmium tetroxide or ethyl alcohol or picric acid okay compound means when more than one chemical is present that is called as a compound fix uh, fixative like boens fluid or carnois uh, fixative is there okay then depending on the action on the protein it can be coagulative or non coagulative coagulative means all the dehydrants like ethyl alcohol even the picric acid non coagulative means formaldehyde glutaraldehyde osmium tetroxide okay so this is how you can uh, you know classify the fixatives in details okay so now depending on the types of fixation the fixatives as i have already explained they are divided into four headings so description of the nature of fixation for example immersion fixation so it is the commonest way of fixation in the laboratory so in this technique the whole specimen is immersed in a liquid fixative such as the tissue samples are immersed in 10% neutral buffered formalin or cytology smear when it is immersed in 95% ethyl alcohol so those who are doing fnac when you are giving uh, the the smears for the pap staining you are basically immersing the entire slide in 95% ethyl alcohol okay similarly this is uh, you know when you are uh, fixing any type of tissue in your college uh, during the grossing procedure so one day prior you are basically immersing the entire tissue in 10% neutral buffered formally then we are going to read about the coating fixation as the term is the coating this is commonly used in cytology samples now basically whenever you want to transport a particular slide and for that transportation uh, you know for time only for that time you want to you know fix or you want to actually give a protective coating to the cytology smear in that case you use the coating fixative now the spray fixative is used for easy transportation of this slide so what are the advantages of spray fixatives they help in fixation of the cells they impart a very important protective covering over the smear during the transportation period there is no need to carry liquid fixative in a bottle or a jar for example when you are carrying out a ward fnac so uh, you know the patient cannot come to the lab so you go to the ward in that case you have to carry a bottle in case you want to give the you know for pap staining so you have to carry a bottle containing ethyl alcohol 95% ethyl alcohol so it is better that if you have a spray fixative then you can just spray over the uh, particular slide and then bring back the slide to the lab and then you dip it in the uh, um, liquid fixative like ethyl alcohol now the spraying over the smear should be smooth and steady and the optimum distance is 10 to 12 inches should be maintained between the nozzle of the spray and the smear the spray fixative usually consists of alcohol and wax therefore this wax should be removed before the staining procedure is carried out now there we then we are having vapor fixation so in this type of fixation the vapor of the chemical is used to fix either a smear or tissue section the commonly used chemicals for vapor fixation includes formaldehyde osmium tetroxide glutaraldehyde and ethyl alcohol the vapor converts the soluble material to insoluble material and these materials are retained when the smear comes in contact with the liquid solution then we have another kind that is perfusion fixation so this is mainly used for research purpose in this technique the fixative solution is infused in the arterial system of the animal and the whole animal is fixed the organs such as the brain or spinal cord can also be fixed by perfusion fixation then we are having freeze drying now if you remember freeze drying is a type of physical method of fixation so in this technique the tissue is cut into thin sections and then rapidly frozen into a very low temperature subsequently the ice within the tissue is removed and with the help of vacuum chamber in the high temperature okay so what are the steps so at first the thin cut tissue section is rapidly frozen to minus 160 degree centigrade by immersing it into a liquid coolant this is known as quenching and the commonly used fluid in the in the quenching bath they are liquid nitrogen propane and isopentane alternatively the tissue section can be frozen by keeping it in close contact with chilled metal in the next step the ice within the tissue is removed by placing the tissue in the vacuum chamber at a higher temperature for example minus 30 to minus 50 degree centigrade the water of the solid tissue is removed by sublimation and the water vapor formed is absorbed by a suitable drying agent in the final step the tissue is gradually warmed 
to 4 degree centigrade and is finally impregnated within the embedding medium. Freeze drying technique is useful mainly to study the soluble material and very small molecules. So, what are the advantages of freeze drying? It is excellent for enzyme study. There is no change of protein, no shrinkage of tissue and there is preservation of glycogen. So, again freeze drying, okay, this method can be asked in the viva or it can be asked as a short note in the exam. Now, we are going to discuss a very, very important part that is the mechanism of tissue fixation because this is 100% asked as a long answer question. It is 100% asked in your viva as well, okay. So, what are the essential precautions that you should take for fixation in general? So, certain essential precautions are necessary for proper fixation. What are those? The tissue should be free from excessive blood before putting it in the fixative. It should be thinly cut in 3 to 5 millimeter thickness before you are giving it for your tissue processing. Now, the amount of fixative fluid should be 20 times more than the volume of the tissue. Now, this is the ideal amount that should be there. Okay, 20 times more than the volume of the tissue. Okay, but for example, in Bancroft, okay, in Bancroft, they have given that the amount should be at least 10 times. 10 times is basically the minimum amount or it is the at least this is the amount. At least 10 times the volume of the tissue should be the amount and ideally should be 20 times. The tissue with the fixative should be in tightly screw capped bottle. Now, we are going to first start with the mechanisms of coagulant fixatives, okay, the first group. So, coagulant fixatives, remember that both organic and non-organic solutions may coagulate the proteins making them insoluble. The cellular architecture in vivo is maintained primarily by the lipoproteins and the fibrous proteins such as collagen. Coagulating these proteins will maintain the tissue histomorphology at the light microscope level. But unfortunately, remember, unfortunately, because the coagulant fixative result in cytoplasmic flocculation and poor preservation of the cytoplasmic organelles like mitochondria and the secretory granule. Therefore, these fixatives are not useful in ultrastructural analysis. That is, you cannot use alcohol fixatives if you want to carry out electron microscopy. Okay, it, you can carry out the HNE &E section and that too the HNE &E staining is very satisfactory with when you are using the coagulant fixatives. Okay. Remember this point. Uh, mainly remember the coagulant fixative that is a dehydrant coagulant fixative. They are mainly used okay, in cytology. Okay? It basically used during the FNSE okay, for the pap staining. So, the first group of coagulant fixatives include dehydrant coagulant fixatives. Okay? So, there is dehydration and coagulation of the protein. So, methanol and ethanol are commonly used coagulative fixatives. So, these two alcohols, how do they act? What is the mechanism of action? They remove the water from the tissue and cause, they cause destabilization of the hydrophobic and hydrogen bonds and thereby disrupt the tertiary structure of the protein. So, these will remove water from the tissue and they will cause destabilization of the hydrophobic and hydrogen bonds and thus they will disrupt the tertiary structure of the protein. However, remember the secondary structure of the protein is maintained. Ethanol is a relatively stronger dehydrating agent compared to methanol. And ethanol and methanol, they start work from 60 to 80 percent concentration respectively. Now, because ethanol is stronger, it starts working at 60 percent concentration only. And because methanol is weaker, so it starts to work at 80 percent concentration only. Now, the protein denaturing effect of ethanol is more than phenol, more than water and polyhydric alcohol, is more than monocarboxylic acid, is more than dicarboxylic acid. Now, there are two important disadvantages of the alcohol as a fixative, that is the coagulant fixative. Uh, it leads to shrinkage of the cells and it also leads to removal of soluble substances from the tissue. So, basically ultrastructural evaluation cannot be carried out using coagulant fixatives. Now, there are other types of coagulant fixatives as well. well these include your different types of acids like acid coagulants like picric and trichloroacetic acid. Okay, these are the different kinds. So, the charges on the ionizable side chains, okay. They are changed using acid coagulants such as picric acid and trichloroacetic acid by disruption of the electrostatic and hydrogen bonding. These acids may also insert a lipophilic anion into the hydrophilic region and therefore disrupt the tertiary structure of the protein. So, this is how they are acting. Now, acetic acid, if you see, they coagulate nucleic acid, but they do not fix a precipitate protein. Therefore, it is therefore added to other fixatives to prevent the loss of nucleic acid. Okay, So, it cannot act independently. It is acting along with, with other kinds of uh, fixative. 
why they are uh, you know used because they specifically they are coagulating nucleic acid so they can prevent the loss of nucleic acid proteins then we are having trichloroacetic acid it, it can penetrate the hydrophobic domains of the protein and it can also produce anions which reacts with the charged amine group so this interaction okay of trichloric acid uh, trichloroacetic acid with the tissues leads to precipitation of proteins and also extraction of nucleic acid then we are having picric acid it dissolves slightly in water to form an acid solution it reacts uh, it, it in reactions it forms salts with the basic group of proteins causing the proteins to coagulate now remember if the solution is neutralized then the precipitated protein may redissolve picric acid fixation produces brighter staining but the low ph solution may cause hydrolysis and loss of nucleic acids so these are the other types of coagulant fixative now we come to a very very important group of fixative okay because uh, it includes formaldehyde which is one of the most common type of uh, fixative which is used for routine uh, uh, you know for uh, in the routine uh, working of the lab so the examples of cross linking fixatives include formaldehyde glutaraldehyde and other aldehydes like chloral hydrate and glyoxal as well as certain metallic salts like mercuric and zinc chloride and other metallic compounds like osmium tetroxide Aldehyde groups are chemically and biologically reactive and are responsible for many histochemical reactions as well. Example is Argent-Taffin reaction. So the first group uh, that the first important uh, you know uh, 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 the first important tissue fixative okay that we are going to read is formaldehyde. And over here we are just going to discuss the mechanism of action okay of each important type of cross-linking fixative. So formaldehyde the number one cross-linking fixative that we will see. So what happens that formaldehyde in aqueous solution combines with water to form methylene hydrate which is the methylene glycol. So this is the formaldehyde combining with water to give rise to a methylene glycol or methylene hydrate. Now in long standing position this methylene glycol that is formed it might further react with water molecules and it might form a polymer which is known as polyoxymethylene glycol. So, glycol. so it, this basically might react further with water and they might undergo cross-linking to form a polyper. But remember, in a neutral buffered system, though remember formaldehyde is always maintained in a neutral buffered environment and we will discuss what is this neutral buffer environment later on when we will read the individual fixative. So this again, so this again depolymerized to methylene glycol in the neutral buffered formally. So whenever formaldehyde is there in the neutral buffered for, uh, you know, neutral buffer environment in that case this polymer that is formed it again converts back to methylene glycol this okay now this formaldehyde okay formaldehyde reacts with various side chains of the proteins and forms hydroxymethyl group so for example this this basically that you see over here this formaldehyde that you are seeing over here this formaldehyde it reacts with it reacts with mainly the proteins okay it reacts with the proteins to form a hydroxymethyl side group okay so formaldehyde reacts with the various side chains of the protein so for example over here the formaldehyde is there it is reacted with this side chain over here and it is forming hydroxymethyl group so this is the first reaction this is the first reaction or the primary reaction that you say that you are getting okay this is the primary or the first reaction now these compounds containing this hydroxymethyl side group they are highly reactive and they will subsequently cross link uh, um, uh, by forming methylene bridges. So as you can appreciate that this hydroxymethyl group that is formed this will react with another uh, you know side chain and they might ultimately you know they might uh, form a cross linking methylene bridge okay. So firstly they react with the side chains of proteins to form hydroxymethyl group which is the first or the primary reaction. And later on, they might react with further uh, other protein molecules or the side chains to give rise to methylene bridges. And whenever this methylene bridge is formed, that is why we are calling it as cross-linking. Okay, cross-linking. This is the second reaction or this is the secondary reaction that is taking place. Okay, so this preliminary reaction of hydroxymethyl side chain. Okay, this is the primary reaction. And the subsequent intermolecular and intramolecular cross-linking of the molecules with the help of methylene bridge, it is the secondary reaction and it is a slow growing process. This ultimately produces an insoluble product. So if anyone asks you, okay, if anyone asks you what is the main mechanism, whether cross-linking is the main mechanism or whether hydroxymethyl side group uh, formation is the main mechanism by which they are acting as a fixative. So the answer will be the primary reaction or the 
hydroxy methyl side group formation is actually the first and it is the primary mechanism of fixation by the formaldehyde remember methylene bridges uh, when they are formed or when this cross linking is taking place this is a very very slow growing process okay and it is very secondary it is a secondary reaction and it is not regarded as the main mechanism okay so sometimes they say that this is a paradox that we are calling formaldehyde as a cross linking uh, fixative but remember one thing that this cross linking is taking place you know at a later time and it is a very slow process and it is not the primary mechanism okay okay so when the current relatively short fixation time with uh, are used so in day to day life we are using a very short fixation time okay so when the current relatively short fixation times are used with 10 percent neutral buffered formalin that is in hours to days the formation of hydroxymethyl side chain is the primary and the characteristic reaction and the formation of actual cross links are very rare it may be very rare the formalin can be removed from the tissue by prolonged washing uh, however once the methylene bridge is formed in the tissue the reaction is stable and it is difficult to remove formalin from the tissue washing for 24 hours removes approximately half of the reactive groups and after four weeks of continuous washing approximately 90 percent of formalin can be removed so we can say that the fixation by formaldehyde is somewhat partially reversible formaldehyde also reacts with the nucleic acids by reacting with the amino group of the nucleotides okay so this is the mechanism of action of formaldehyde so remember one thing that formaldehyde it can react with water and give rise to methylene glycol as we can appreciate over here and they might give rise to a polymer okay now once in a buffered environment this polymer can give rise to methylene glycol and again you know it is an opposite reaction it can give rise to formaldehyde now remember whatever side chains are present in the proteins formaldehyde will react with that and form a hydroxymethyl group this is the first primary reaction and with with the uh, shorter times of fixation in uh, uh, hours to days okay basically this is the primary me mechanism of fixation now over a long period of time such uh, you know hydroxymethyl groups can react with other uh, side chains of the proteins and they might cross link okay to form such methylene bridges okay and this cross linking process is the secondary reaction taking place over a long period of time okay and they might not be the main mechanism by which formaldehyde is fixing the tissues the next important uh, group that we will see is glutaraldehyde this is again a cross linking fixative so it is having two aldehyde groups as we can appreciate over here it has two aldehyde groups that are separated by three methylene bridges okay now very importantly the aldehyde groups of the glutaraldehyde they react with the amino group of the protein so this is the amino group of protein with which they act okay and very importantly simultaneously they might act with the amino group of multiple uh, proteins and as a result there might be formation of cross linking okay they might lead to cross linking so when one aldehyde group reacts with the amino group the other free aldehyde group may help to cross link so it reacts with this then the other one will also react and they will cross link these two particular uh, protein molecules that we can see and there is a cross linking okay now remember glutaraldehyde aldehyde rapidly and irreversibly cross links the protein so over here the cross linking process is irreversible unlike the formaldehyde now remember in comparison to formaldehyde the penetration of glutaraldehyde is slower okay similar to formaldehyde the reactions with the lysine are the most important for forming the cross links now remember glutaraldehyde they do not react with carbohydrates or lipids now extensive cross linking by the glutaraldehyde results in better preservation of the ultra structure but this method of fixation negatively affects the immunohistochemical method and therefore slows down the penetration by the fixative so remember one thing very importantly that it is uh, it, it you know it is very importantly used for electron microscopy why because it is preserv preserving the ultra structure very nicely okay very very important and but remember one thing that the penetration rate is very slow okay so for ihc this is not very good now any tissue which is fixed in glutaraldehyde it must be very small approximately 0.5 millimeter maximum okay should be the size of the tissue the next important uh, uh, you know agent which is acting you know by cross linking is osmium tetroxide so let me show you again osmium tetroxide just like glutaraldehyde it can it is also used in electron microscopy so when the tissue is to be subjected for electron microscopy again osmium tetroxide can be used so over here if you can see the osmium tetroxide the valency is 8 now this osmium tetroxide most importantly they are fixing the lipids 
Now remember formaldehyde and even glutaraldehyde, they are not very good fixative. They do not fix the lipids. Whereas the osmium tetroxide, they can fix the, uh, they basically fix the lipids. So how do they do that? They are basically acting on the saturated bonds, okay, over here in the lipids, okay. So what are they doing? They are basically causing oxidation of the unsaturated bonds in the biological tissue, particularly the lipids. So this lipid that you can appreciate, they are having some unsaturated bond. So they are basically oxidizing that to form a hexavalent osmium. So they react with the unsaturated bonds of the lipids and they change from plus 8 to plus 6 valency. Okay, so this hexavalent osmium will further hydrolyze to form diol and osmium trioxide. Now, along with this formation or this reaction that they are having with the lipids, they can also have cross-linking. For example, this osmium tetroxide can directly act with simultaneously with two unsaturated carbon atoms of the lipid and can lead to cross-linking. Just like we had seen the cross-linking in case of glutaraldehyde. So, over here also we can have cross-linking and that is why these are called as cross-linking fixatives. Okay. So, if you will see over here, uh, osmium tetroxide is mainly used as a fixative in electron microscopy. It is used alone or as a combination with other agent. The compound causes oxidation of unsaturated bonds in the biological tissue, particularly the lipid. It converts the unsaturated fatty acid into a stable product known as glycol osmate. The osmium becomes hexavalent in this reaction from plus 8 to plus 6 valence as I have already shown you in this particular reaction. Now, osmic acid monoester formed in the reaction is easily hydrolyzed to form diol and osmic acid as we can appreciate over here in this reaction. Now, osmium tetroxide may react with two unsaturated carbon atoms of the lipid simultaneously and may also help to cross-link as we can appreciate over here similar to glutaraldehyde. Now, although the complex is colorless at this point, the typical black staining of the membranes expected from fixation with osmium requires the production of osmium dioxide. Osmium dioxide is black, electron dense and insoluble in aqueous solution. It precipitates as, as the above unstable compound breaks down and becomes deposited on the cellular membrane. So this is one of the disadvantages of using osmium tetroxide. Okay, so it is again mainly used as a fixative in electron microscopy. Now we are going to read about what are the factors which are affecting fixation. Again, a very important short note, again a very important viva question. Okay. So, factors affecting fixation. Now, what are the, these are the following factors which might affect fixation. Number one, the pH or the hydrogen ion concentration. Most of the fixatives, they work better in a neutral pH. In fact, good fixation occurs when the pH remains between 6 to 8 and no morphological distortion is seen in this range of pH. There may be changes in the ultrastructure when the pH is either too high or too low. In a very low pH, the NH2 group of amino acid is converted to NH3 and the reaction between aldehyde groups of the fixative is reduced. This may affect the structure of the protein. Similarly, the hydroxyl groups of alcohol may become less reactive in a strongly acidic environment. Usually, buffer solution is added to maintain the pH of the fixative. For example, in formalin, we are adding some buffer. Even in glutaraldehyde, there some buffer is being added. So, that is basically adding to maintain the pH and to, and, and to increase the reaction between the fixative and the tissue protein. The commonly used buffers in fixatives include phosphates, bicarbonate, tris and acetate. The buffers should be chosen in such a way that they should not react with the fixative. The second important factor okay, affecting fixation is the temperature. Room temperature is alright for tissue fixation and there is no difference of the cell morphology from 0 to 45 degree centigrade. However, the fixation time may be reduced in higher temperatures between 60 to 65 degree centigrade because at higher temperature, the vibration and movement of the molecules are increased. This increases the rate of penetration of the fixative within the tissue and also accelerates the process of fixation. In case of very high temperature, the antigen within the tissue may be destroyed and therefore they might not be suitable for carrying out further higher tests like the immunohistochemistry. The enzymes are better preserved in lower temperature and for enzyme histochemistry 0 to 4 degree centigrade temperature is suitable. So depending on the requirement, okay, you should choose the temperature. Then the duration of fixation. Now the depth of penetration of the fixative, this is the depth D. It is directly proportional to the square root of the time of fixation. So this is thus the time of fixation and this is the square root. So the depth of penetration of the fixative is directly proportional to the square root of the time of fixation. And the, and the diffusibility of the different fixatives may also vary. 
So this is the diffusibility coefficient and which is different for different types of fixative. So as I told you, D stands for depth of penetration, T is the time duration and K is the coefficient of diffusion of fixative which is specific in each fixative. For example, the coefficient of diffusibility is 0 0.794 10% formaldehyde. It is 1 for 100% ethanol, it is 1.33 for 3% potassium dichromate. Now the penetration rate of formalin solution is approximately 1 mm per hour. Now gross specimens should not rest on the bottom of the container of the fixative. They should be separated from the bottom by wadded fixative soaked paper or cloth allowing penetration of the fixative in all direction. Now remember the proteins inactivate fixatives especially the proteins present in the blood or in the body fluid. The presence of blood may hamper the penetration of the fixative. Therefore, it is preferable to wash the tissue specimen thoroughly before putting it in fixative. The tissue should be sectioned between 3 to 5 mm. Overall, formalin fixes the tissues within 24 hours. Prolonged fixation may cause loss of lipid and protein and significant reduction of the enzyme activity of the cell. This may also cause hardening of the tissue. Now, the fixative volume should be at least 10 times the volume of the tissue specimen for optimum rapid fixation. So, this is the least amount that should be there. Ideally, there should be 20 times the volume. Okay. Then the next important factor is the osmolarity of the fixative solution. Osmolality of the fixative is considered, is, is considered to have a considerable effect on fixation. Hypertonic fixative solution will cause shrinkage of the cell, whereas the hypotonic fixative will cause swelling of the cell. Mildly hypertonic fixative between 400 to 450 uh, osmol, milliosmol is preferable for routine use in the laboratory. Okay, electrolytes 0.9% NaCl or sucrose may be added in the fixative to maintain the osmolarity. So, these are nothing but extra additives. Then the concentration, a very low concentration of the fixative will prolong the time of fixation and a very high concentration will cause rapid fixation. However, higher, temp higher concentration of the fixative may cause tissue hardening, tissue shrinkage and artifactual changes. Mildly lower concentration of the fixatives with neutral pH is needed for proper fixation. Optimal concentration of formaldehyde that is used is 10%. That is the optimal concentration that is to be used for formaldehyde. Additionally, at higher concentrations of formalin is present in its polymeric form which can be deposited as a white precipitate as opposed to its monomeric form. So, at a very high concentration of formalin, uh, the, the formalin might be present in the polymeric form which can be deposited as a white precipitate. Again, ethanol concentration below 70% do not remove free water from the tissues efficiently. Therefore, the concentration of the fixative is very important. Again, the last important point is agitation. Agitation increases the rate of penetration and therefore rapidity of fixation. Optimum agitation is needed as slow agitation may have no effect of fixation whereas rapid agitation may have a detrimental effect on delicate tissue. Now we are going to read about the commonly used fixatives in the lab. 